Without any further ado, Louis Prosperi. Well, thank you. Um, this was an interesting thing because I wasn't really scheduled to be up here, but uh, so I figured I'd do something different. I decided rather than prepping for this event, I didn't prep at all. So, and I figured that what I do, what I like to do is I like to challenge myself and basically look and do things outside the box. Because the reality is we don't succeed unless we are outside of our comfort zone. So right now I am outside of my comfort zone and that is where we should all be almost all the time. Because if you're in your comfort zone, you're not learning, you're not experimenting, you're basically napping at work, in my opinion. So I got this board up here, just because everybody else had slides, and I figured I'd put something up here with a bunch of words, and I parked it over there on purpose for you guys, what the hell is this going to mean? You know, what, what does this mean? Actually, it doesn't mean really anything. It was just sort of just a couple of words. But then I decided, well, purpose. I'm thinking, on a personal level, we don't do anything without purpose. Um, Ron's example of his tombstone up here, there's a purpose. You know, what drives us every day, what drives us to go to, to work or to school or just getting out of the house is purpose. Whether you believe it or not, it's purpose. Now, the funny thing is, we're, we're trained to know what our purpose is as soon as we get out of school. And I don't know about you, but I thought I wanted to become an accountant. And Ron thought he wanted to become a cost accountant. There is no way that you could develop your purpose when you haven't had any real experiences yet. So for me, purpose is not finite. Purpose is what happens as we interact with the world. And your purpose, your core beliefs don't change, but your purpose and what you want to do changes as you get older. Uh, Ron, I'm not going to say that you're old, but um, legacy is something that Ron's looking for with his purpose. So what I want you guys to do is think about what's your purpose. Start with a very high-end purpose. I want to save the world and then build from there and do this all the time. I would even recommend to write it down and do this on an annual basis and see if your purpose has changed or maybe how you get to your purpose has changed. So that's why I put purpose up here. It's, it's, it's what we do, it's how we do it, it's how we live. Value pricing. Now, this is a good word, value pricing. And I, I brought this little chart here. I've only got three minutes, so I'll try to do this as fast as I can. The chart came up, which indicates early adopters, innovators, blah, 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 blah. But what, what's interesting is the innovators already know how to ride the backward bike. They already have it. The early adopters either have learned it or are going to learn it. But what's interesting about value prices, when I looked at this name, because me and Ron did the black swan, as I go, this isn't really an outcome. This is scope. To me, this is what we do, not what we actually deliver. Because when we were trying to determine when I was trying to market the black swan value pricing, I couldn't do it because I was using value pricing as what we did. I go, no, no. When these people leave the program, they are completely transformed. And the reason why I believe that to go to the next step is we have to change what we say to mean what we actually deliver. Because people can't relate, and, and you guys have said it, they can't relate to scope. They don't care about scope, they want the outcome. It was a great example today at the Art of Value the last couple of days. Because we said value pricing, what did everybody want to know? How do I price? How do, but that's not what you were teaching. That wasn't the educational component. We were teaching you how to ride a backward bike. So I believe that the value pricers in here, the ones that have done it, the innovators have to start looking at what value pricing is and make it so that these guys get it. Because as soon as they can relate to it, then things change. But just because we are comfortable in learning how to ride a backward bike and we're already there, we can't expect these guys to do it. 
not right away. You know, and it's great we saw the, the apps, people are doing apps, people are doing things, but it's, to me it's always about the first component. And value pricing to me is scope. I know we're, uh, I'll be glad to take any questions afterwards, but the reality is, and, and if your question is, so what is the answer? I have no clue, but it's not value pricing, right? So I, I do love the fact that when we get into the training and we, we have to pull this thing out, out and, and put it in a, in a long form, we have to break it down. Uh, book, Ron's book, Implanted Value Pricing, is my reference manual and all of that, but it doesn't describe what he actually does. So that's basically what I have, and thank you for wasting six minutes with me. Thank you. <laughs>